Hello, welcome back. This is Dr. Cofelt again, and we are going to look at the second part of our aqueous ionic equilibrium, or the buffer chapter, I call it. Um, in this section, we're going to look at calculating the pH of a buffer solution once you've added a little bit of acid or base to it. So in the first section, we made the buffers and we figured out what the pH was. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add a little bit of acid or base and we're going to use ice or and or Henderson Hasselbach to calculate what is going to happen. Now when we're adding this, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to first figure out um, what's going on in the buffer and then you're going to figure out um, once you've added something to it, how is it going to change back according to Le Chatelier to reestablish the equilibrium. So this is kind of like a two-part ice table if you do it that way, okay? So um, I use an ice table in the first part regardless because what you have to do is you have to figure out what's going on once you've added the acid to it. One thing to keep in mind is that you're going to be using up um, whatever you're adding to it. And so you've got, it will, it will end up being zero. So like if I have a buffer and I add, um, it, I have an acidic buffer and I add a base to it, once I add the acid to it, it's all going to be used up or base, whichever one I add to it, it's going to be used up. So, um, and then we're going to calculate the pH of the buffer solution um, if we're making it with a weak base instead of a weak acid. All right, so to calculate the pH of the buffer after we add an acid to it, we have to break it into two parts. The first part is the stoichiometry part, and so we have to look and see what is happening in the reaction when we add that chemical to it, because now we're actually doing a reaction, a chemical reaction. Before, we were only making a buffer. Now we're going to add something to it, and we're going to see how that could impact concentrations, and thus we can then figure out how it impacts the pH of the solution. The second part I call the equilibrium calculation. We use the new um, numbers, so we get a set of numbers here, and then we use those numbers to calculate the equilibrium because um, once it reacts, then it has to reestablish equilibrium. So it happens in two steps. Okay, so this this is a wordy problem, okay, um, but we'll, we'll get through it. All right, and so this is where we're going to stress the system by adding more acid or more base, and then it's going to have to reestablish um, its um, equilibrium. Okay, so um, I have hydroxide. Okay, now when I first, when, I, when I've got it all in there, all I've got is buffer. So my buffer is composed of my 0.1 moles, and you always look on these and see how many liters it's in, because since it's in one liter, then it's 0.1 molar as well as 0.1 moles. Okay, if it wasn't, then you'd have to adjust for that, just like we did in the equilibrium chapter. If it was 2 liters, then it'd have to be 0.1 moles per 2 liters, which would make it 0.05. But since this one is 1 liter, that makes it easier for us. And so, and of, and of course, you know, we don't care about the water because it's just there. So we, we start out from the problem with 0.1 moles of our acid and 0.1 moles of our salt. And the, the Ka is 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5 because it's acetic acid. Um, and then we are going to add, um, this is an acidic um, acidic reaction, so I'm adding hydroxide to it. So in, it tells me that I am adding 0.01 moles of solid sodium hydroxide to it. All right, so that's 0.01 moles. Now, since I added 0.01 moles, that's going to decrease my acid. I'm going to use the same amount because it's in a one-to-one -one ratio, okay? I'm going to use the same amount um, of acid molar-wise as I put in there, and so that's going to decrease my acid to 0.090. It's going to increase 
my acetate, my salt, by 0 0.010, and so I'm going to end up with 0 0.0110. Notice though this, and this is what kind of kind of freaks people out a little bit when they see it the first time. I had zero, I added 0.01, now I got zero. Why is that? That's because I used it up. I reacted this with the acid and I had more acid lots more acid than I did base. So the acid is going to neutralize the base I put in there, which means it's going to get rid of all the OHs. So when I get done, I will be back to zero moles of OH, but I did make more salt and water, okay? And so it, it, it's hard to understand it, maybe. Um, it's not as intuitive, maybe, but just remember, if you're adding less of a base to an acid, you're going to use all the base up and you'll end up with zero when you get done. Okay, so if, if, you'll, if you'll hang with me on that, then what you do is you take the um, acetate. Now, one, what it's going to do now, remember, once this is finished, it's gone. There is no OH in there anymore. So it's now an, an acidic situation. So you've got your acetic acid that is the 0 .9, 0 0.090 moles, molar. You've got H3O plus which started out at zero, okay? Um, and then you've got your acetate which is whatever you ended up on that first one then too. So you got 0 .090, zero acid, because um, that's what we're producing. That's our unknown, right? And then you've got acetate. The Ka is very small, so I can use approximation for those. And so I can calculate the Ka from that. And I'm going to use the Ka from this, right? I'm going to use the Ka from the new concentrations. So my Ka, which is 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5, is going to be equal to the acetate times the hydroxide, I mean hydronium, sorry, divided by the acid. So that's going to be equal to the 0 0.110. Okay, so I'm using this data for this, the second the equilibrium situation, okay? 0 0.110 times x divided by 0 0.090 because this is the system I have to recover from. And this is what has shifted me, okay? All right, and so um, 1.8 times 10 to the minus five times 0 0.090 divided by 0 0.110 equals x. Now, I did that in one step, okay, where I cross multiplied this, and then I had to divide by this one, okay, to get my x. And so my x is going to be um, somewhere on my thing, 1.47 times 10 to the minus five. All right, and so my, um, the negative log of that so the pH is 4.83. Okay, so that's doing the ice table. Okay, now you can use Henderson-Hasselbalch for this you know, which is my preferred way. But you do have to do this first. In both, both methods, you have to figure out what your equilibrium concentrations are. You have to figure out what those concentrations are after you've added the base, okay? So that you can find out how much acid you're producing in order to get that um, back to equilibrium. So Henderson-Hasselbalch method, what you're going to do is you're going to say the pH 
is equal to the pKa plus the log of the salt over the um, acid. So pH is equal to, it told you up there in the problem that pKa is 4.74, which would be the negative log of your 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5, right? Plus the log of the salt, which is 0 0.110, divided by your acid, your new acid concentration, which is that. So you get 4.74 plus 0 0.087 and that's going to give you 4.83. So when you're even though you're using Henderson Hasselbach, you've got to figure out what the new concentration is. So you do you use the hydroxide up first to see what that did to your concentrations of your acid and your salt. And then you take those concentrations and you put them in, if, and then you can take those concentrations and directly put them into Henderson Hasselbach. Or you can then um, use those, right, with approximation and um, do the Ka calculation. So either way works. But you've always got to do that first one because you've got to see what the new concentrations are at equilibrium after you have made that shift in equilibrium. And this is just another page I had in case I needed more room, okay? Here is your practice, okay? And so this time it's asking you the original solution in the previous um, example you added 0.015 moles of sodium hydroxide, and then um, what would what would that turn out to be um, for that? And um, I got 4.88. Okay, and then you have another practice because these are tricky. So I wanted to make sure um, that you um, had plenty of practice on these. Okay. And on the addition of the acid, you just have to figure out how many moles that is that you're adding, okay? So this one, this one, you got to think a little bit on this one, but you should get 4.65. So when we add a basic, if we have a basic buffer, right, we're going to start out with um, the conjugate acid of whatever base we're using and it's going to be weak right this is when we use these because the um, strong ones they just go ahead and we can do the original acid or base concentration to work those out so those aren't hard these these weak ones though are the ones where we have to use ka's and all that all right so ammonia is a very common weak base okay in h3 and it produce it it hydrolyzes um the water into and then takes a hydrogen and forms NH4 plus and OH minus. So that's why it's a basic. Um, the calculation for your um, Henderson Hasselbach is exactly the same as we were doing with your acids. So again, if you want to do the old the, the ice um, ice table way, you're welcome to do that. Um, did want to also mention if you and, and this is on your uh, pH square. Um, that Ka times Kb is going to equal Kw. And Kw, as you, if you remember, is 1 times 10 to the minus 14. Then the pKa plus pKb is going to be equal to 14. So it's the same exact relationship as your pH relationship. Right? Your pH and your pOH and your H plus and your OH minus. So they're the same exact relationships, so it's not something new that you have to remember. All right, so 
this this is an example of the um, where you have the um, weak base so you have a basic buffer this time and I'm just going I'm telling you just use Henderson Hasselbach now if you don't want to use Henderson Hasselbach that's okay um, you can you can use the other way you know I'm not I'm not watching you do that so um, you know as long as you get the correct answer um, I'm happy and you'll get it no matter which way you work it so um, but HH is always easier especially if you have like I said if you're gonna have to balance something um, it saves you a lot of time so um, Henderson Hasselbach is that the pH is equal to the pKa plus the log of the salt this time over the base because it's a basic buffer um, and so um, notice that it gives you the pKb is 4.75 okay so we can do one of two things we could go ahead and convert it to pKa all right or we can um, work it as a POH and then subtract it at the end okay so um, this should be POH because if I'm doing a base it's going to be POH all right so then the POH is equal to and that'll be B sorry about that PKB right they're the same you you put them in there exactly the same way so if you didn't write B or whatever as long as you're using the right number you're good all right so the PKB for this is 4.75 plus the log of the salt um, which in this case is 0 0.2 molar divided by 0 0.5 molar okay now I, and I want to show you something and I'm going to do them the same way like okay so if you wanted to do them and just and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a POH at the end here and my POH um, is going to be 4.75 I think I believe um, um, so the PKB is 4.75 right so in parallel I'm just going to show you if you wanted to do it as a pH you could also do it that way um, but you would have to flip them so you would flip your acid in your base so if you wanted to do the pKa and not do the thing at the end some people um, some people teach it this way um, I don't particularly like it because I think it's a little confusing because you have to flip the base and the acid when you do it and you have to get the pKa by saying 14 minus 4.75 which is 9.25 okay so I'm just showing you that don't get all confused on me I'm just showing you that because um, you know sometimes you'll see see it you know described like that um, I like to just keep things simple so um, I'm if I take the log of 0.20 divided by 0 0.50 okay that's going to give me um, minus 0 0.398 let's say okay and so POH would give me 4.35 right and I know simple simple to get pH it was 14 minus 4.35 which should give me 9.65 okay now that other way so to me that's the simplest way okay 
And so I just put it in. I know it's a base. I know I'm getting a POH. So I know if I want the pH, then I'm going to have to subtract it from 14, and that'll give me my pH, right? Simple, simple. All right. Um, if you do it the other way where you turn it into an acid problem, then you're, you use your 9.25, so you've subtracted your 14 at the beginning, plus the log of the 0 0.5 divided by the 0 0.2, which is 9.25 plus 0 0.40, which is 9.65. So I guess what I'm trying to tell you is um, whichever way seems to make the most sense to you, um, I don't like this one because I have to remember to flip that, and I and I mean I just I think that's that's just asking for making a mistake. So when I have when I have one in base, I just work it as a as a POH, get that number, and then subtract it from 14, and then that gives me my pH. So that's what I recommend. But like again, I said you know whatever works for you. And then you have some practice problems um, that um, when you're adding things to it and what that's going to do to the um, to the buffer. All right, and that's it for part two.